Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we're showing you how to create a grocery shopping app using the list box widget. The list box widget is a way of showing to the user a list of options. So in this video, we'll be creating a, a list box that basically shows to the user a bunch of grocery options. And then the user can select from that list box the items that he wants to buy. So without any further ado, let's begin. We'll start off by creating our initial list box. We can call it grocery list, okay, tk.listbox, and we'll just leave it with the default parameters, all right? There is the height parameter that we can change. Its default value is 10, so we'll just leave it at that, all right? The height is like the number of items, the number of rows that it shows at any given time. So with that in mind, we'll just pack this, okay? Then what we'll do is just run our code so we can at least see what this looks like. Okay, so it's a bit hard to actually see this because it just looks like it's part of the window. So we'll add some padding. Okay, that's a bit better. And you can see here that we have our list box. Okay, and what I'll do is just add in a little bit more padding. We'll add in some text over here just to make it stand out a bit. TK.label and also root text our grocery shopping app all right and then we'll just pack this in as well with some vertical padding okay so now what we're going to do is put in some items in here and how do we do that how do we add in items to our list box well what we're going to do is we'll just create a list of values or we'll call it items okay then we can write in our items in here bread uh, cheese or we can do um, what else milk cookies meat veggies so on and so forth then we'll just iterate over these and insert them into our grocery list okay so the insert function for the list box, the first parameter that it takes is the index where it's going to insert the item. So this we can do tk.end if we just want to append a bunch of items in there. tk.end is a special index basically that will always add the item to the very end of the list. Okay. So this is actually works on many different widgets. It works on the entry widget, works on the list box widget, any widget that deals with, you know, index parameters. Okay, so then over here, we'll add in the item that we want to add. And then if we run this, we can now see that our grocery list has all these items. Okay, and we have some nice highlighted features. We can also move our keyboard around using the arrow keys. See, I'm not using my mouse and I'm just using the arrow keys. So it's pretty cool, like we get some good features uh, in the base list box without having to do anything. Now, how are we gonna make this a grocery shopping application? Well, what I'm going to do is um, grocery items, we'll just change, we'll call this grocery items instead, okay? I feel like it's a good idea to always make something practical when learning something. So that's why I'm trying to make a proper application. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this over here. And I'm going to create a frame as well because our UI is getting a little bit complicated. I'm going to create an additional list box basically and you'll see why very soon. So we'll call this main frame tk.frame and root. And then we'll just pack this in. Okay, so I'm gonna put these two list boxes within this frame. And we'll just move the padding from the list boxes into the frame, okay? Of course, the list boxes will need to have some padding between them as well, so we'll do that. Okay, change both of these to have the frame as the parent. We'll just run this code to make sure. Okay, now we, we're getting both of these list boxes in there, but not in the way I want them to be, the way they're al aligned. So I'll just do tk.left and tk.left on both of these list boxes and get them into the right al alignment. All right, cool. This is how I want them to be. 
So what I want to do here basically is simulate an application where you have a list of items, predefined items, which is basically the inventory, which our shop or whatever store that we're buying from has. And when we double click these items, then they're going to show up here, which is our grocery list. This is our grocery list. And this list, list box is the product list. Okay. So that's basically what I'm trying to create here. And then um, how do we do this? Like how do we proceed from here? Well, we need to connect the double click event to the list box. This list box with the one that contains the grocery items of the store. So what we're going to do is grocery items dot bind. We're going to use events. If we wanted to do a single click, we could use the list box select uh, event. But we want to do a double click. So we'll do uh, double button one. OK. And it has single, right? Single. And because the other one was this is like a, a taking care event. And this is like a special virtual event that's only specific to the list box okay this this event right here this is this works across all widgets basically okay so we need to connect this to a function so we can call this function add okay we'll just write it over here at the very top and um we take an event okay and what we'll do is grocery items now we need to first uh, make sure that we're you know getting the current item so how do we do that right we need to first figure out which item was clicked which item was double clicked right so what we'll do is the grocery items dot cur selection okay we'll print this out just so you guys see what's going on now i will double click on cheese okay and it prints this out okay so that is the index the index where that l exists. And if we just take another look at this, cheese exists at the first index, bread is at zero, milk is at two, and so on. Standard Python indexing that begins from zero. So we're just gonna um, modify our code a bit because what we want here actually is the text value, the text value of the item that we just selected. So to, to do this, item text we'll do uh, list box sorry it's not called this box it's called the grocery items dot get then we'll pass in the index that we retrieved over here okay now we'll print out the item text and this should work so if i double click cheese it prints out cheese i click milk click cookies meat yep it's working now that we have the item text what we can do is add this within our grocery list. So we'll do tk.end and then we'll do um, item text. There we go. That's pretty much it. So I double click on milk. Okay. Um, it says it doesn't have, oh, it's called, sorry. It's called insert. So if I double click cheese here, cheese will show up over there. I double click milk, milk will show up there, cookies, uh, meat, etc. Now, there's a slight uh, thing, if I, if I double click this again, cheese will show up again. So this is where you can just add in validation. So you can, what you can do is like get a list. You can get all of the items, okay? Using, um, you know, from where to where, basically. Th these are two parameters that define from where to where you want to get the values in the list box. So we want to start from zero, the first index, the first value and we want to get values all the way all the way up to the end so what we can do is this if item text not in here okay and let me just print this out as well so that you guys can see what this is okay current list all right so that's quite a bit of code we just modified. Uh, but basically what, are, what we, we just did is that, well, let me just show you. I double click bread and then this shows the current list as bread. Now, if I double click bread again, it's not going to add bread again because what we did was this if statement 
that checks to see if this item text already exists and it will only add it if it did if it didn't exist basically that's very simple code very efficient uh, and yeah very simple then we just created a, a simple grocery shopping application I just want to show you that this is uh, also has a scroll feature so if we just add in a few more things like sausages um, biscuits I know that's the same thing as cookies pretty much but let's just keep adding random stuff so um, pita bread and then we can add in chicken I think that's enough that's more than 10 okay no that's exactly 10 so we'll just call them I, ra random names at this point item object uh, goose I know that's random so what you can do here is actually scroll so I'm using my scroll wheel to actually scroll and you know move around over here you can also use the keyboard like I'm just using the arrow keys now to navigate so that's pretty cool okay and if you can do anything really here you could like bind the enter key to the list box as well so you could just press enter and then have these items that show up in here into our grocery list that would be really simple you can just like duplicate this and do enter and that would work so if I just click on uh, hold on oh wait wrong one it's uh, enter enter key would be return okay so just click on milk then I'm gonna press enter and you saw milk pop up there my cursor was nowhere near that so like I just click on cheese I press enter and then cheese shows up in there okay and what you can even do like in certain scenarios you may want to like delete the item from this list box so you can go ahead and do that as well uh, all you have to do is like grocery items dot delete there's a delete function I believe so it just works by passing in the index now if I click on cheese and enter it it's gonna disappear from this list okay so in that case you don't even you don't even need to add this if statement because the item won't be able to be you know double added because it, it's gonna be gone from there okay so I just showed you basically how to you know use the list box in this grocery shopping application which is also going to be a concept you, that you guys can carry over to other types of applications so i hope you guys found this useful and definitely subscribe